Hi, I'm Nave here with week four of the BTSD Elvergate draft. I before I talk for like 15 minutes, a, a disclaimer: people are fucking up my house today, so you might hear weird buzzing or other background noise. But we're playing Parent Cynical or Perry or whatever he likes to be called. Who I have beat twice on my original BTSD DL winning run, and it's also been on every other draft I've participated in since then. But like always on the other side, we never got the play. You know, we could have played in playoffs sometimes, but that didn't happen. But we're back on BDSD all home turf. We finally get to play. Uh, his teams are generally on pretty extreme sides of the power spectrum, either extremely powerful or extremely weak. And this time it's extremely powerful. Definitely top fought three in this league. I don't know how it would compare globally. But unfortunately, that team is uh, very, very, very poor to me. They don't have a single dragon resistant on their teams. They're all Como fodder. The only thing that I can reliably hit it super effectively is like Brave Bird from Murkrow and Air Slash from Charizard. And if you want to dig deeper, you get like Dragon Pulse Klutzer and Acrobatic Sneasler, which all, all of those things have their issues. Unless you want to count an in inaccurate Blizzard from Glaceon, which I'm not going to. But then, two hours before the trade deadline for the week, they traded Glaceon for Carbink, which complicates the matchup a lot, and that's why they traded for it. At minimum, they can now double up Carbink and a Terra Fairy to block out cl like clanging scales, and they have set up beside Shell Smash Torterra, which they probably won't bring because of Ov Overquill. So that pressures me out of protecting on fakeouts, which sucks. There's a lot of different good sets Carbink can run. Specs or Meteor Beam are both very good. Almond and Iron Press are both options into my team one way or another. They should be strong. But like the issue for them is what they have to run is reliant on like a team builder 50-50 with Como. And like Como is the central offensive piece in this matchup, I can't pretend it's not. They have to guess whether it'll be physical or special, because for their each for their own reasons, they're both pretty good. Because physical will threaten a lot of Okos on their team, and special has the spread move. And if you've been looking at it, you can see I pick special because it has the spread move. Physical Como gets Okos. But it can only really pick one coverage move since I want to run Protect and I want to run a bunch. So like Iron Head for Carbink, Ice Punch for Torterra, Thunder Punch for Kloetzer, and then I have to run the Dragon Fighting because you know, why not? And I'm not running any setup moves on this again, and unfortunately, his Mercury is very good. There's no way that's not coming. Carbink's big achievement in this matchup is getting me to put Terra Ghost on this instead of Terra Dragon, which would guarantee Yoko everything that is an AV if I got a helping hand in. Um, Ghost both makes me immune to body pressed and fake out, which is why I have it. But it also makes me neutral to fairy, which is all I need against Carbink's base 50 special attack. Clanging Scales does not get any Okos, unfortunately, but it gets very reliable to it chaos that I should be able to achieve with all, all of this bulk I've put in. Speed is to avoid the all of the, you know, outspeed Como at zero speed calcs, which I don't think I'll do. But it's enough to outspeed max speed hacks at minus one. We'll get into my icy wonders later. Dragon Fighting Steel is perfect coverage and there's no golden goes around here, and my counterplay is basically hope it doesn't have Terra Water, and it doesn't Terra on turn one, and then flash cannon it immediately, drop it down to sturdy, and then even if it sets up, it'll be too frail to do anything. And if it, if it's clear body for somehow, then it'll die it'll it still won't die because it doesn't add a flash cannon, but just that iron head. But the main the main lead is Magmar, of course. It'll probably always be our lead next to Como, which is the extremely standard set I'm bringing EVO Light back for. Hopefully, will not be a mistake like it was in week two. This lives Life Orb Water Pulse with no additional modifiers, and it can probably live a headlong rush from Torterra, 31% chance to. Burning Jealousy might be better than Overheat here, but I like scaring the Torterra with an Oko more, and it's doing a reliable 50% to everything that doesn't resist it, and that's fine. Terra Water is just the Water Pulse, and it's neutral to headlong, that's it, it's, it's water. The grass types and the electro type. The electro type is not coming, and the grass type isn't very scary. I'm mostly worried about Terra Blast Ground or Gen Z. I think that's the best Terra type for the Haven to me, and it occurs Magmar. And that happens next to an Unterra Como, and then like a Moonblast or something of something super effective of that nature humps happens, and I don't Terra, then I probably lose on the first turn. So like. That's kind of one another big thing that pressures me. Like Porygon Z Carbink is bad because like I don't wanna I don't want to double protect because what if the Carbink sets up a calm mind? I don't want to Terra Water because what if it's not Terra Blast Ground or what if it just normal Terra Blasts, you know, stuff like that. I'd also drop the hyper beam, but I I'm fine with that. 
think a ton is again my alternate lead in for magmar but it's also probably always in the back over cloak fake out gives me complete over uh complete fake out security and i can have that next to ghost como and be fine gigaton hammer oko to sturdy on carbic and i don't think they're built such that they would have ability shield or babiri berry on their carbank so if i see a team that seems to be kind of carbank focused and especially if it's like charizard focused even ironically i'll probably lead tinkaton Encore locks all the slow guys that are attacked if the one doesn't come, and it also locks Harping into a setup move if a Terra waters. Um, this used to be Helping Hand or Fake Tears instead of Encore because Fake Tears would also go through the clear body on Carbank, but I found I resolved that with my secret third DLC lead. And also if it's Terra Water for Charizard. Haunter is off the bench and probably won't come unless both Charizard and Axer stay at home. I said Spray guarantees Oko's on everything with Clanging Scales. Icy Wind is kind of ineffective since Honor is base 95 and not like 105. But Valuable Speed Control anyway, you know, if, if they're both slower than Honor. And Flood Bomb will do a good chunk to everything. Unfortunately, I can't have like a Super Walls Out Haxor's Terra Fairy Honor because of Mole Breaker and the other abilities suck. Again, I probably can't lead this because it's an auto lose against a Murkrow plus anything lead. They just have to protect on the guy that is a Murkrow and then Tailwind and then double the Honor and I lose too much momentum. So it's a fun maybe game 3 tech that hopefully sucks him out a bit. I would have preferred to bring AP Norvern, but that guy doesn't get Icy Wind. Which sucks. And then we have our like two mix and match cleanup attackers. The first is Snorlax. My answer to Sun or Rain modes, it has enough bulk to live in Adamant Needler, close combat at 1 HP, and will kill it back with high horsepower. And like with Yawn, it can 1 boo on every special attacker he has. Citrus, just for increased longevity, it was Silk Scarf um, to get like an Oka roll on like Porygon Z, and I went, nah. I'd rather not kill myself the double edge recoil. The special attackers can't hurt it very well, but it can't really hurt anything well back, so I feel kind of iffy about this, but if I'm able to preserve Terra, which probably won't happen, I'll, it will be very, very fine. I like this bulk spread also. This is this is just kind of funny. But if this is what I have to do to make it not work in Tailwind, it makes me go, eh, that's not good. But my favorite set for this week is Scarf Frostmoss. This will outspeed an Adamant Sneasler and live a CC from it. It will probably outspeed Shell's Master Terra if it's just trying to outspeed Haunter, because I don't think there's much reason to outspeed Noivern. And like, of course, it threatens with Terra, it threatens Haxorus, and Swaki was on Terra Doko's. Swaki probably lives, but this resists Woodhammer and all this bulk. So, Giga Drain is mostly for Clawitzer, but it's also like, you know, it's fine, it's healing. Icy Wind is for Sneasler if it's not unburdened, and also to help uh, late game Komoo to get Clanging Scales off. And I don't think I'll click U-turn ever, because I don't have any, I don't really gain anything from switching into something, but I'm keeping it just so the set feels legitimate. <laughs> because U-turn Scarfers all feel real. The issue is, of course, the rock weakness and the fire weakness. Moxing Sneezer does feel pretty good to me. I do have a notable rock weakness on a couple Pokemon. And, like, Frozmos can't live that even with all this bulk I've invested. And if, like, the Sneezer is unburdened, I can, there's nothing I can do to stop it from rock sliding me. And the same goes for Charizard Heat Wave. Charizard Heat Wave kills me. I'm unfortunately unlikely to bring it game one because of that, and so it's kind of a game two tech. A lot of a lot of set play going on here. I have to like lead Magmar Como, take a ton, Snorlax game one. Let's kind of figure out the sets with what I think is pretty generalist and go, okay, Charizard and Charizard isn't here, or like it's Rain Charizard, or Claw or like Sneasler isn't here, but it's CC Dire Claw Fake Out Protect or something like that, and then I go, okay, I'll adjust and bring Frosmos instead. That'll kill X Y Z. <laughs> but I just I just want the set to do something. I like the set a lot. This is a very creative use of it. It's it's surprising how much just modest twelve Ice Beam does. I don't know. But for what I'm super scared of, again, a lead Terra Water Carbink and a Terra Ground Porygon Z are very difficult for me, but in no particular order, like a Mercury lead where he protects the other guy and then Tailwind the first round would suck. That lead specifically with Porygon Z and Murkrow and then Charizard and Rotar in the back is like cataclysmic. I don't really know how I how I beat that without Frozmos if I can't run out Tailwind. And even then it's like a 50-50 on who I ice beam first and if that works. 
it should be able to be fine with frost moss Norlax, but again like on game one hard to figure that out Short chop disabling clanging skills when they're just trying to like hit my ghost como would really suck i have to be more careful about that than i would like av cloetzer specifically is very diff very very difficult for me to break and i can only really do that with snorlax and i can do like because i can only do like 30 with it was tinkaton and so is like terra steel um swords dance haxorus like swords dance breaking swipe is good it's got dragon ground coverage which i can't contest i mean i can aura spirit but if it's like terra fairy i can't i can i can't really flash cannon it very well i don't know if that'll come in the first place it doesn't seem that good but basically i perceive my big builder advantage is going in it's like of course everything with como he has to prep for setup which i'm not bringing but like he also has to prep for trick room so if like if the Mercury was just running tailwind haste quash and it's not running sunny day or taunt that would work out very well for me and if like time echo comes to imprison pr that also goes well with me or like even the really weird specific useless trick room text like power weight clutter or something but i'm consciously optimistic here being so Como focused from the start, I feel like I make me too predictable. And, and Como is not strong enough on its own where I felt like for other matchups like NDD Iron Crown and VDSD LS5 or like some of my, I guess I didn't have that problem in P, I love pretty diverse leads in PSDL, it didn't happen. But like beating Langris always felt safe because of Intimidate, I would at least get to figure out where the clear amulet on is on already. I got pretty valuable information, I don't think Como really does that. So, but like again, Como in the back isn't very good, so I think I don't know. I'm having thoughts about Como. And I, I might either just have to get good or I might trade it out. I don't know what we're I don't know what we're thinking. But like basically, I don't like leading Como. I think they go, oh, this is what I want to beat, and then they do their text and then I die. So I've strayed from doing that in these previous sets, but Como has not been central to a single game. It clanging scaled in like game in like the for the last turn of game one against Nikki and then never came again. It's DC'd in game two against Quirt, and I lost that set, so it doesn't really matter. And game three didn't come at all. But, like, I have to use my S tier like it's good. I can't pretend like it's not. And this is the best set to, to start doing that. I think I'm out of the Como trenches in the first place. But to wrap this all up, my downfall isn't just playing badly or being out prepped in some way. It will be to not having enough damage as my assumed man or Komoro and to get on small or moss lead in the back. That's everything. That's enough that's enough talking, it's time for the game. I have to go take a shit. Blizzard told me that I should make my Snorlax Terra Flying, so I'm gonna make it Terra Flying. Now it's game time. Please be gentle, no problem. This looks fine. Charizard Claw at Serpor Gun Z, Murkrow, New Lord of Taimako, my presume he's trying to catch me on over prep for the car bank. I think I prepped adequately for it. What was my rule here? Hmm. I think I decide, so I do the same thing, we do this because of, this should be fine, yeah. All right, we're ready. I don't know what to expect here. I do know what to expect here, I think. It, whatever, I don't know what weather mode it could be, if there's a weather mode at all. The Chimeco is here to imprison Trick Room, but not necessarily do set up Trick Room, I don't think. Because of how fast the rest of the team is. Honor is kind of iffy because of the Charizard, but maybe not in general. But we'll see, we're waiting. Good day gaming activities, are really Know it. As I was saying on the first sort, Murkrow and Sneasler does not bear any problems for me. We're just going to follow me clanging scales. Yep. Haunt could be very reasonably expected. We overheat and we aura spear. Or I guess I could do the calx on. No, that's fine. We can. Because we have to play around the third chop. So I think we overheat an Aura Spear. But the fine, I could have helping ended with the Taunt Murko. And it probably Tail, Tailwind Haze, Taunt Move. I can even protect. 
Anyone for tech, I guess? Yep, that's fine. Fire cloth is even more fine unless I sleep. I don't sleep. I don't know if Aura Spear will kill here. Nope. We overheat the Charizard, and we, so I think we switch out into the Snorlax here. Yep, Terra Fire. Sunny day. Overheat go. And zoop. I love when you're hurt by your solar power, Zed. You overheat you and protect. Uh, do we even do that? I think we just sack. I kind of want to sack what's his name here. Yeah, we want to sack Tinkathon so we can just do the, the gimmick again. Do we? What does Sun boosted minus four Porygon? What does this Heat Wave do to it? Really like 30. You can do Overheat Double Edge. Heat Wave is 29. Citrus Berry will put me in some good range. Oh, that does that does kill. Interesting. That is kind of bad. Hmm. That is kind of bad. We are going to protect here. We're going to protect here in the in the hopes that it dies this turn. And protect. Actually, I think we're screwed here. The, no, because that was specs damage. That was specs damage to do that much to Torkoal. That was because uh, it yeah life orb is taken. It's not specs. I just I just suck. I guess. We fake out clanging scales. I think this Art Sweep is common. I think Pokemon Beer has assessed it correctly. I don't think this can kill... It's not Life Orb, so it's, it might just be like Silk Scarf. But you... Oh, it's Covert Cloak. It's Covert Cloak Charizard, and it crit me. That sucks. Yep, get a ton hammer. I am faster than the Charizard. That is very important to know. Being faster than the Charizard. But it having Cover Cloak means Icy Wind isn't good. I don't think this looks very good for our hero. Which is me. Well, I know what to do against the Charizard. I know I can do the Helping Hand thing. We think we have to do the same lead again. Because uh, we can do... Inkaton. We can we do the same lead again. Inkaton is unhelpful against this sand this like sand thing. So is it we do this and we do this and I think we have to preserve Terra. We have to preserve Terra somehow. Because Tinkaton is useless here. We do this and we do this. And I think given given the speed we do have to bring, we do get to bring Haunter. We get to bring you, you you win yet because um, the frost moss is bad against the sun mode. The I should be able to be have an advantage with the sun mode because I don't have to fake out. I should be fine with everything. But he did win again. Did I see? Because it didn't tailwind, which is interesting. So taunt sunny day, either tailwind or haze. So maybe it didn't do that. Oh no, I'm just happy learning about the speeds. And so we wait. And so we wait. See, so the the what did we overclock? Oh, it, it wasn't life orb. It was solar power. But the Porygon Z was it was life orb. I just I'm just stupid. It is just life orb. So what? So that right there was it was a mo It must have been a that was a modest like kind of a mid roll. Okay, Porygon Z and that we're going to double protect on like a Terra ground and see what happens uh, there.
But the thing is, is I don't have to. When I don't, when I don't have a Terra like gra uh, Ghost, I'm very well well suited for this Charizard. I have to double protect to scout the like Terra Ground or Terra whatever on this Porygon Z. But I think it'll be Terra Ground. Terra Ground Blast seems very fine here. There shouldn't really be any switch ins that fuck me up here. Yep, Chimeco, Terra Ground as as expected. Helping hand clanging scales. Actually, let's let's calc for this Chimeco, because if Chimeco can't Terra, I know Helping Hand should get this. What if this is like 2252? Clanging scales would do like 72. We can risk it. We can risk it assuming Chromo doesn't die. And this isn't faster. If you die. Psychic noise. I'm not soundproof. Not being soundproof kind of fucked me up. But I'm fine with that. Because now we overheat the high horsepower. Because overheat will get this. No way overheat doesn't get this time I go. Not in the sun, yeah, no way that doesn't get this time I go. And then the Terra Flying is going to bail us out here. So good, thank you, Blizzard. Or no. Uh, we overheat here. And then we just, I think we just protect on the... Yeah, that seems fine. Like, what, is, what happens if I fake out? No, there's, there's no reason to... Is there a reason to not just... To not just double protect here? There isn't. Only if it's SD Rock Slide. Yep. Burning Kiss. Fine. Then Terra Ground being burned. Close Combat. Favor. My Solar's Power should kill. Overheat is faster. Oop. Helping Hand. Uh, we follow me. Double Edge. Heat wave, yep. And now we do that again. We should be able to run it back and do fine. Um, do we want to lead Haunter? Do we want to lead Haunter? I think we do. I think we lead Haunter. I think we have to lead Haunter. I think we don't have. Because we don't have any reason to be scared of that Charizard. Right? We don't have any reason to... To do that. We don't have any... I don't think the... I don't think the Murkrow has Tailwind. That's my big guess. My guess is the Murkrow doesn't have Tailwind, and I think... With this, the rest of us will be pretty well equipped for everything that will come in the future. Follow me... It seems... It's still probably good. Um... Do I want to bring you? Do I want to bring you? I think I have to bring you. I think I have to bring you. I think even with the sun, I mean, he could go back to the sun. But if he goes back to the sun, then I just get, I believe I live in Air Slash because of Cobra Club. It's Cobra Club Modest. Let's, let's not do that before you deselect before I make that decision. In sun, does Cobra Club get my coma? It does. That's not good. No, we can't do that. We can't do that. Mm, no, no, we're going to. We have to cover for the lead. I didn't be off any offense out here. The offense not here. This is a this is a big risk, but it's a big play. There's a big risk and a bigger play. Charizard, he's where. Uh, just what I not just what I expected. But certainly very interesting. We do ice. We can't do that because of the icy wind and protect, I think. 
we sludge bomb. Now what does sludge bomb do to this? Sludge bomb just does 50. We just we just get our we just get our 50. There's no reason to tarry here. Yep. Get our 50 again. And we switch out into a urinator. Dark Pulse is fine. We Sludge Bomb. Take a Drain. Figure out if it's AV or not. Or not. Nah. What does. What will, what will you take from this? If you pair a Fire, this beam will do 25. And I think we'll do it. We can't do that. We have to risk block here. We do take a drain. Because swap out into swap out is the best play here. You swap out into Sneezler and take the sludge. Yep. Giga draining was pretty bad. Sludge bombing is fine. If you attack, because if you attack this guy again. All that happens is this. I clanging scales and I get a kill. Because of pulse. Or do I? No, we just do the Giga Drain again for safety. Because like fake out I think you predict the Terra Ghost. Isn't it? But we do want to get the what's his name out of here? That is an AV Clark side too. Honor. I know I should have icy winded on that turn though, that was pretty bad. Effect. Giga Drain 34. Dark Cloth is 0. Dark Pulse for 0. Climbing Scale Giga Drain. For the love of God, don't freeze me or whatever the fuck you do. Don't sleep me. Single target climbing skills will kill here. Acrobat, uh, close combat will kill here. Will not kill anything here. Grass is more than fine. Just don't wait as long as you don't go to sleep. Paralysis. Paralysis. Good. Yeah. Very bad. Dismal. We have to we have to attack here we have to get good ring here yeah oh, i had the terra that was stupid i, I had to, i could have parried i parried and kind of won there i threw i threw i threw the Terra Dragon. Oh, that sucks. That sucks so bad. Yeah, and it just kills because it was going to Thunderbolt. Uh, oh, I fucking threw. That sucks. I had that if I Terra Black Dragon by one. Just wanted to do a replay review of this last set just for the videos on enemy going arg you could either help constructive and helpful maybe not from my opponent but certainly for me so in game one i just get super out prepped by the cover cloak like very extremely good job i failed to identify the life orb on the porygon z and that the charizard wasn't a boosting item in the grand scheme, i don't think that matters once pz and charizard are positioned in the back i can only win by making extreme lapses in judgment would have would have had to always work out so i think basically would not have happened. I probably shouldn't have brought Tinkaton once I saw no Carbink or no Haxorus. Because, you know, I can't have or I assumed it was Charizard was faster. Stuff like that. But bringing Frostmoss and Haunter were iffy for their own reasons. So, like, kind of a whatever. The first two turns go in my favor. Um, I guess something I think is funny is that the, the Snoozer was like Mirror Herb and Pressure here. 
Well, like, the depressor was an accident that, hooked, like, that luckily did not come into play, but it is funny. You can't even see the cutoff, but this is Terra Fighting, Fake Out, Close Combat, Dark Claw Protect, and this Armeco is their steel, pretty complicated EV sets, EV spread, second noise, draining caster, grand prison. I do think it's funny they taunt here instead of tailwinding, um, but it's set up on turn one, but whatever. Um, and then, so do I, then on this turn, it's kind of when the I could have played better here comes up, because I know Sun is coming up here. So I had a bunch of turns to switch and take a ton, because I recognize it's probably useless, because if Tinkaton dies, I get to go into Magmar, reset my taunt, and then maybe get an overheat on Porygon D that could kill it. And like, at bare minimum, since I switch in Snorlax here, I would get to follow me and yawn something, and if I get that yawn right, I can win, or double edge, so I can get a double edge, because who knows. But like, I'm thinking, okay, Terrifier, two Terrifier Circle, or Life Orb and Sun. Heatwave kill my over, kill my Magmar anyway. For like, and then I got my freeze wizard to Tankathon, and like, okay, it doesn't have. I don't assume there's Cobra Cloak. This still would have been good for me. And like, I, I get the numbers, the damage numbers wrong hard, but like, to know for sure, I'd have to do a bunch of calcs, and even then, I would never assume it was Cobra Cloak. I'd assume it was Sash. So you know, very smart prep. But like, even if I did, even on any of these turns where I would have switched and Tankathon for it to die, like any. Heat wave turn like this heat wave turn here if i switch it in i still would not have been but really with this turn that i should have switched in i take a ton because the heat wave and the next turn i don't think they do but like i'm still slower than everything double edges in an oko and anything but i would have a significantly higher fighting chance i just have to get like maybe one or two turns right which is a lot more than you know a lot less and then being able to get zero turns right i did but like, so then I get into here, I do get it in. I fake up the Charizard because, well, I am assuming the Oregon Z is Specs, but I just don't notice that I didn't take any damage. I go, even at Specs, it's Thunderbolt or an Ice Beam, and because I'm bulletproof, uh, Shadow Ball will not kill Kumwile. So if I fake this out, Clanging Scales kill it, I would win. If I just made the gamble that Tinkaton is faster than Charizard and went for an Encore to Encore into effect or something, or whatever. And I guess if they just got themselves flinched there, well, it's not it's not worth getting, thinking about all these little minute details. But like, you know, if there wasn't, the, again, if they double protected here, even if it was Covert Cloak, I would have probably lost anyway, unless I made the same game ball. Like, they play this very well, full props. Like, the things I had to do here were unrealistic for anyone to reasonably make, I think. Uh, game two, just, you know, because why not? Uh, you now this turn, this turn's funny. I go here. I'm glad I learned it's Terra Blast Ground. I'm glad I figured that out. I knew that. And then... I don't know. It's funny not being soundproof. It's gonna screw me over here. Because if I was, it just wouldn't have done anything. Like, I won, so it didn't matter. But you know, that's silly. Uh, thank you, Blizzard, for the Terra Blast. Uh, the, the Terra Flying. Marlax. Yeah, and then they can't do anything to me. And I'm glad I didn't reveal Yawn here smart uh, but then we get into game three this is the big one so i make two very key misplays here one that i think was preventable it was just a play better play um you know that reflects on my skill as a whole and the other one was an unforced error basically so you know my plays on the first two turns again are as you know as good as they could have gone you know the sludge bomb works the protect works the sludge bomb again has no consequence um i guess i could have because I was afraid of the Claudes are having Dragon Pulse, and like I didn't want to pair for that, so that was again fine. And then here is basically when I kind of make the misplay, right? Because I picked Sludge Bomb over Icy Wind here. Because I was scared of them taking the opportunity to just kill Frostmoss, and I felt that Icy Wind was a pretty risky play because if they like. If they Terra fired or something, I don't know. But they didn't know I had Icy Wind, they didn't really have much reason to assume I had Icy Wind. Um. Because I was thinking it was like a 50-50, but it wasn't. Because you never let your Charizard, your best piece in this matchup, go down here for no reason. The Sneezer at minus one probably wouldn't have died the Clanging Scales, because Icy Wind would have done less damage with the Sludge Bomb, I think. But it still would have been much better than what actually happened. Uh, I predict Mega during that turn doesn't matter. And then, on this turn... I get, you know, I do that, it doesn't do anything. I get Thyra Claw Parrot. Which really sucks. Because if I didn't do that, I just clanging scale, these go down, 
it makes my line a lot easier. But again, I was still in a, this was not an unwinnable scenario. So like, it hurts, not a deciding factor. I'm not really too mad about this. And then, so like, and then again, what I am here and I am mad about is I don't Terra Dragon here. Because in my burnt mind, I go, I, you know, the, 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 the lines go up in my head and I think it doesn't matter. And I don't want to, oh, it's Flamethrower, I'll die. Because like, and if I do, like, you know, the, this dies here, it would have to double protect and then I yawn the Gorgon's here. So... Just a very, just a very frustrating endgame, very frustrating loss. This doesn't, it didn't matter that I didn't care flying there because um, Plunderbolt would have got me. I'm like, just a very frustrating endgame, uh, not to diminish Perry's win at all, like, good shit, you got me. But I really have to work on my minute detail noticing and not clicking too fast in these sets. I've gotten lucky on them not costing me for a while, there's a ton of examples across these videos. But, like, thinking PZ with specs, or even a non-boosting item, which I did. Overlord ultimately did not cost me anything, but it could have, and even more details like that. Um, I started saying this in my set last week and then got interrupted and cut it out, but I'm going to install the Freeze Eye extension that makes you wait a while for your moves just for these draft games, so I don't even have to work on my brain. I can just use technology to fix my itchy trigger finger, and then when I go to Ridge, and then I'll do that for reasonable weapon, whatever. <laughs> Being at 2-2 is more losses than I took in the entire Season 5 of VDSDL, where I only lost once. But 2-2 isn't unmanageable. It feels that this is... I think it's definitely the most losing I've done early in a set. We can figure it out. I haven't made any shells of a team have I yeah, we VDL here. 1-2. I did lose 2, so this is... We're on track for what happened in CPD. Basically. But I've only got a 1 win like 5 from here now if I want to make top seed. I don't even have to make top seed. I can probably afford to lose one more. But I do want to get top seed anyway. Um, but I won 10 in a row in BDSDL. I won 7 in a row in PSDL. And I won 6 in a row at TBN. Like, winning 5 in a row is a pretty small feat in comparison. Of course, I would then have to win, like, 3 or 4 in a row to win the whole thing. But even then, that'd only be 8 or 9 in a row. I'm not going to check how many they have to. We'll come back better and stronger in the following weeks. And part of being better and stronger is my own little announcement that we're making a big trade this week. It'll be very interesting and worthy of conversation. So for any draft mates that watch these, you have until Saturday to guess what the trade will be and intercept me or figure out what it is. I left that risk for no reason. Goodbye. Uh, GG's to Perry. High Street. <laughs>